Hello everybody, in this episode I'm going to be covering how to add and manipulate video effects to clips in your timeline here. So let's start going through that. Right down here we've got a bunch of different clips, and over here under my project area, if I grab this uh, and pull this a little bit this way so you can see more of these panels right here, uh, you'll see this effects t uh, panel here. And uh, two things you got to kind of know about adding uh, and manipulating video effects. First of all, you're going to find your effects under this effects tab right here. And if you're missing that for some reason, you can usually go under window, workspaces, make sure you're on something like editing or effects is actually a good layout to be under for uh, manipulating and doing video effects. Because what that does is it takes this panel and separates it over to this portion of your window here. And you've got your project window still down here and it puts your effect panel up here so you ha kind of have a quick, so you have quick access to it instead of having to go down here and click it. So let's rehearse that really quick. If I go under editing, this is kind of your standard layout and you just have to make sure that from your project window, if you don't see it here, you can hit on these arrows here and you'll be able to find it uh, and click on your effects but if you are going to be doing effects I recommend going on going up here and hitting your effects layout so you've got your effects window has been so your effects window has been moved up to the upper right hand portion of your screen so two windows that you got to be familiar with is first of all this is where you find your effects and you grab your effects to add them to your video clips and up here you've got your effects control right there and if you're under your regular editing layout you'll see it right here next to your source monitor right there but we're going to be going under effects effects here to be doing some effects. And I'm going to go over and grab this little tab here and drag that down and give a little bit more space here. But over here under your effects panel, you'll be finding effects for Lumetri presets, which are video effects basically, but these are specifically uh, geared toward color correction. But down here under your video effects tab, if we arrow this down, you'll see a whole list of different types of effects for your video clips. So first of all, you've got these different categories for different types of effects um, that are put into different folders for kind of their categories here like color correction you have a color correction filters under one and uh, under distort you'll see a whole bunch of different types for distorting your video so you've got all different types of effects under organized under these categories under this folder another thing to notice here is you've got these little items up here and uh, some of these effects as we arrow down here you'll notice you'll see these little icons next to the next to the effects and right now it's not showing them all because if we grab this and expand this over here and show you it's going to reveal some more here what you've got with these effects is certain characteristics here. First of all, let's move our mouse over this and show what these mean. This icon means that your effects are accelerated. That means if you're using a video card that is supported by Premiere, then it will you you will be able to add these effects to your clips without having to render them. They should they should be able to use the video card to process these effects real time and do pretty well at displaying the the results real time. The next one here is your 32-bit. If you have these items that say 32-bit, you'll notice the Lumetri color effect is one that supports what is called 32-bit float point. This basically means it accesses all the original color information, um, all the original color information of your footage. Where that's going to be really important, of course, are there in the in the effects that are uh, causing changes to color, where it's accessing all the original color channels and maintaining those, it keeps it at 32-bit float point. So keep in mind if you use some of these effects that don't have that next to it, it might actually, and especially if it's something dealing with color, like color balance, it's not going to be accessing all the original colors, uh, especially if you're working with raw footage. And YUV basically means that these that these effects that use YUV, this is basically a more simplified color spacing and more accurate color spacing than RGB. And this supports that type of color spacing, which gives you actually more of an accurate color display, which is why you see it on the Lumetri color as well. Even though we are correcting our colors in RGB, this supports YUV uh, color spacing as well to give you more accurate colors. So just some things to note there as, you, as you're going through from clip to clip, that something like brightness and contrast, of course, has this... Uh, accelerated functionality to it but it does not support the 32-bit color so in this instance if you want to mess with brightness and contrast you would probably want to use a Lumetri color and honestly not a lot of people use these anyway uh, just so you know what you're looking at when you see these let's show how to add one of these effects to one of your video clips here so if we go to um, let's go under blur here we're going to find our Gaussian blur there which is supported by all three of these little keys there if we grab this Gaussian blur what we can do is we can just simply drag this and hover over a clip that we want to add it to let go and drop it and immediately you'll notice the effects controls popped up here and uh, you can see that we've got our native effects that are already added to each individual clip here which is motion opacity and time remapping but one thing that is added here let me arrow these down is our Gaussian blur effect if we grab something else let's grab let's go under 
color correction and let's grab our brightness and contrast even though I said people don't really use this and we're going to drag and drop this to our clip and notice it added another effect to this here. So now we've got our Gaussian blur and our brightness and contrast added here but notice nothing has happened to our clip yet. We've got a playhead over our clip. If you're going to be changing and if, if you're going to be manipulating effects on a clip. First of all, you got to add them like we just did here. And then next you have to go over here in our effects controls and manipulate them. And you'll want to do this with your playhead over this. Watch this with my playhead over this. We go over to the Gaussian blur here and we see the blurriness and you have several features under each effect here. I'm going to grab this blurriness. I'm going to click and drag it to the right and look how this gets blurry. The further I drag it to the right, the more blurry it gets. And with this, you can actually, it starts blurring to, into the inside of the video here. You can say repeat egg, edge pixels and it repeats edge pixels out to the edge there. Now we've uh, get, added quite a bit of blurriness to this. If I bring this back and I just press play and play through it, notice it plays back at full speed here because this is one of our accelerated effects. As we mentioned, it's got this little accelerated effect thing right here next to it. Now notice I've got this certain amount of blur on it. If I go to my effects, little my, my little effects button right here, this toggles the effect on and off. If I click, notice it turns it off. That effect it still has 376 percentage points, whatever you want to call that on the on the Gaussian blur. If I click this again, it turns it back on. So you can temporarily turn those off, toggle them on and off if you don't want to view those effects without deleting them. If you do want to delete an effect, all you have to do is actually just select it. Let's turn this back on here. You can select it and hit delete and notice it got rid of that and we're left with a brightness and contrast. So now if I grab my brightness here and I drag it to the right, it brightens. If I grab my contrast, drag it to the right, it adds contrast. I know I'm destroying the image, but just to kind of show you what these, this effects, these effects sliders do. And of course this has the accelerated one, so this works really quickly. And as I play through this, it will play the effect real time without any lag. And right now I've got a little bit of lag because I'm recording this video. So anyway, all right, so I'm going to select that and I'm going to delete it. Let me put my Gaussian blur back on this clip here. And I'm going to grab this and I'm going to drag it to the right and make this blurry. Just like that. Now you got these little kind of this circle and the square and a pen and a little pen tool up here. Uh, what these are is for masking what part of the image you want your effect to happen to. If I go up here and click on my circle, it'll generate a circle here, um, a circle mask, and I can grab this mask, these points, and change them. And I do have, uh, I will have an an episode on masking objects and tracking them and so on and so forth. Uh, but this is all part of your effect panel now here. And you can go out here to the edge, you can grab this item right here and drag and notice what this does is it feathers from this inner point to this outer point. You have this gradual kind of fall off of this effect by grabbing this and dragging it out. Or if you grab this little square right here and you drag it out to the right and you grab this and you drag it outwards like that, that expands your mask. So you can expand your mask by grabbing this little item here and dragging it out as far as you want. That is your mask expansion right there. I'm going to delete that mask. It's added that mask to my item, to this Gaussian blur right here. I'm going to select that, delete it. You can do this in a square shape as well. And you can grab these corners and notice it just that it just affects this area here. Or you can actually go to inverted and check mark that and it changes the effect to the outside of your mask instead. Now you can grab this feather, drag it off just like that. And we can actually grab our hand here and move that around and notice it just affects everything outside that mask and feathers it, feathers it off gradually from here to here. Every effect you add into this effect controls panel will have this mask feature. You also have this little tracking item right here. I'm going to get this get into this in a future episode. This kind of gets a little bit more complex, but I want to show the basic cropping that you can do with these masks right here. I'm going to select this, delete it. You also have your pen tool, which means you can click and make your own shape mask by clicking, 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 and it makes it your own shape mask like that. Now I'm going to delete this mask and notice if I hit my pen tool and you click and drag, what that does is causes a, creates a bezier point instead of a, a hard edge point and you can make a curved shape just like that. Like I said, I will get more in depth with this feature in a later episode, but just so you know that that exists right there. I'm going to select that mask, delete it. I'm going to also select my Gaussian blur and delete that. Let me grab my brightness and contrast because this, this is kind of one easy, that easily demonstrates how this, how your effects work here. So I've dragged and dropped it to this clip here. I'm going to grab my brightness. I'm just going to drag it up a little bit and brighten up this image a bit and add some contrast to this image here. So it looks a little contrasty. There we go. I'm going to go under stylize. I'm going to grab, uh, let's grab mosaic and drag and drop that to here. So this adds a bunch of mosaics to my image here. I'm going to change this and make it kind of funky. There we go. So it looks all computery and kind of low res. Uh, maybe 
maybe add a mask to this here. Let's move this out just so the outer edges are going to be uh, in mosaics and the inside circle here. Let's feather this off and then I'm going to invert that. There we go. So now we've got those weird mosaics on the outside. I've added some contrast. So I've got a couple of effects added to this, uh, to, to my clip right here. So that's all in this clip. And you have to have a clip selected to show what effects are added to that clip. And you have to have your playhead over it to, to show how it is actually affecting that clip. So I move this. So if I get my playhead, I move it back here. Notice nothing has been done to this video here. And if I select this, notice my playhead is over it and still showing the effects from the previous clip because that one is still selected. If I select this clip, it just pops up the native effects that are on every single clip there. But if I move to the next clip and then select this one, the effects pop up. So let's show how to move effects from one clip to the next. If I want to move uh, these, both these effects over to this previous clip here, what I can do is I can select brightness and I hold down shift and select mosaics, hold down control and select mosaic as well. I selected both those clips are both selected. Uh, those, those effects are, I'm going to hit control C or command C and copy. And I'm going to move to this next clip select it so it shows up its effects here and i'm going to hit Control v and paste and i just pasted those those exact effects to this clip in the exact same order that they were on the previous clip notice that this is a hierarchy here these effects will take place first and then the ones below it will take place afterwards that's important if you're doing some color correction as well that if you do some heavy contrast the next effect will be affected by that contrast as well just one thing to keep in uh, mind that your uh, hierarchy goes from top down here. Let me make this a little bit more extreme here. I'm going to go to the brightness and contrast of this clip. I'm going to arrow this down. We're going to grab the brightness, get that way bright, and grab the contrast, make that really extreme. So that, there, that's really extreme. Let me grab this clip here. With this selected here, I'm going to forget about doing uh, these individual effects here. I'm going to just do Control C on this clip, and I just copied that clip. I'm going to move down the timeline. I'm going to select this clip here. I'm going to right click on it and go up to Instead of paste, I'm going to hit paste attributes. So I just copied this clip right here. And if I do paste attribute, it's going to ask me what I want to paste to it. It's going to say, well, what do you want to paste to it out of the previous clip? And I could leave this the same because nothing has been happened. But I'm going to uncheck these and just say, I just want to paste just my brightness and contrast and not the mosaics right there. So hit OK and it pastes that filter, just the, the brightness and contrast. So it's kind of two different ways of uh, copying and pasting filters is by selecting them up here in your effect controls window and then selecting a new clip and pasting them or copying the entire clip and then right clicking and pasting attributes and selecting what attributes you want to paste to it. One thing I want you to notice here is if you were trying to correct a clip here, let's have this clip selected and I'm going to move down to this clip right here and I've got my playhead over this clip and now I'm going to go up here and notice up in my effects controls, I'm going to grab the brightness and grab this and start dragging it up and look, nothing's happening. I'm going to drag it way down, nothing's happening. The reason why is because my playhead is over this, but this clip is not selected. This clip is selected. So while I've been changing that, it's been changing the attributes to this clip right here. Now watch if I move the playhead over that, oops, and I just destroyed it because I thought I was trying to affect that clip. So just make sure that when you move your playhead over a clip, you have it selected. And one little nice feature to do that if you are if you are kind of doing a lot of effects, you can go under the, your sequence up here, move down, and you can say selection follows playhead. This is unchecked by default, and it's kind of obnoxious when you're just trying to edit. So I keep this off unless I'm doing effects or color correction. You can select this, and now wherever you move your playhead, it automatically selects the clip where your playhead is. So if I move it over this clip, now I can change that, and there's gonna be no confusion as to what I am changing now. Now also, if you wanna remove effects within your clip, I showed you one way of doing that by selecting the clip and actually going under here and selecting the, the effects you wanna remove and then hitting delete. But another way of doing that is you can right click on a clip and you can go up to remove attributes and then you can tell it to just remove everything off of that. If you want it to just remove the effects or a specific effect, you can tell it which ones to remove. You hit OK and it's removed. Or you can select everything in your timeline, Control A or Command A, right click, remove attributes and tell it to remove everything off of everything that you've done. Hit OK and everything has been cleared in your timeline and it's back to where it was in the first place. Last thing here I want to cover with the video effects is this little search panel up here. If you're looking for a certain effect, you don't have to arrow down through all these folders and find it and you know what you're looking for. Say you're looking for your blur. I'm going to click in this little search window, type in B-L-U-R, and it brings up all the items that has the name blur in it. Now I can simply grab whatever one I want here, my Gaussian blur, drag and drop it onto my clip. 
and now I can move over here and drag this over and it blurs. Last thing I want to cover here is the effects that do not have this accelerated effect item on it. Notice this yellow color down here on your timeline. This yellow color means that uh, your timeline has a capability of playing back these clips real time and hopefully won't be taking any dip in quality or won't be laggy. But now watch what happens if I grab a effect, an effect that does not have that accelerated icon on it here. If I grab camera blur and drag and drop it onto this clip, notice that this clip right down here suddenly turned red. That means that this clip does not have, that, that, that this effect here, this camera blur effect, does not have the capability of using, of accessing the video card and accelerating this playback. And what will happen, watch as I move this back and I play, really stroby and really laggy re really fast and that just means that you have to render that clip and the way you render the clip when it's red like this yellow means it can play back real time red means it needs to be rendered to play back full quality and if you hit the if you hit your enter or return key it will render all the red videos all the red clips in your timeline when that's through rendering you'll notice it has turned to this green color. And green color means it has, has an effect applied and it has been rendered and it can play back full quality without any issues. So that's the basics on using video effects inside of Premiere. On the next episode, I will be covering how to do audio effects.